I'm Rob Parker, former Super League player, England international, and now an actor. I think it's really important to share. Um, <clears throat> I've found my own struggles from transitioning from playing rugby and going into what is kind of, in brackets, the normal world. Um, and, and people go through a lot of, of mental health issues. I feel that there, there are now boundaries now to be broken down and people like you know, uh, myself as, as, as a rugby player and there's other you know, people that are deemed tough in, in, in their aspects of their job. So uh, guys who are in the, in the forces, uh, guys who play professional sports uh, and just, just general people that do tough jobs. Um, they always feel that there is a, a facade to keep up of, of being a tough man. And I'm now that it's 2018, I'm really happy though that people are starting to share a little bit more. I think there's a long way to go on this journey. Um, and, and people always find it tough to talk uh, and tough to express their feelings for fear of, of being weak and, and coming across that they're less of a man. Now, the irony behind that is that when I kind of went through my transition and found I can't talk to anyone about this if I say this because I was deemed a super league player you know rugby person that people looked up to and you went to battle each week you know how do, can I say that I'm feeling sad or I don't have an ident identity anymore as as a person because from the age of 16 when I you know started playing rugby or started you know when I signed professional at Bradford you was you was wrapped in this 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 kind of bubble of, of toughness because you were around tough men and, and you know it's kind of monkey see monkey do that okay well if I'm around these people and I'm doing this for a living then I've got to be tough and I've got to you know go to battle every week and, and overcome adversity and injuries and as soon as that that journey of rugby league ends I think sometimes you feel that you've no identity and, and you don't know where to go and I'm not a rugby player anymore that really hit me hard and so I found that I had no identity, I didn't know where, which you know, next kind of where my career was going to take off or what to do and, and that really hit me. So from there on I, I kind of went in my shell. I think, um, I nearly said it then but I was going to say the word depression and I said went in my shell because there's such a voodoo word of saying depression. Everyone has depression, you know, sometimes you have good days, sometimes you have bad days and just because your bad day isn't the worst day. It's a form of depression and even now I think the, the, the stigmas that come with depression and, and I was certainly one of them that if someone ever told me that they were depressed that I'd look at them and go, ooh, you know, as if they've got some kind of lurgy and, and through admittance and having that humbleness going, do you know what, I've got depression or I've had depression, what am I going to do about it now? So. What rugby taught me was overcoming adversity, overcoming injuries, overcoming a loss, you know, how do we regroup, regather? And I went off the, off the rails in, in, in one aspect, is that I forgot my sportsman's mentality, or I forgot, I forgot my identity of who I was. Oh, I wasn't a rugby player anymore, but I was still me. So I had to re-engage with that, and, and once I spoke to my peers, spoke to friends, family, Randomly, I always found that speaking to a stranger on a bus, you know, or someone that you had talked to in a pub and you would just get chatting to someone and they identified with the problems and the issues that you had uh, as if it was, it was just fate that that person was going to be at that place at that time. And the more I shared and offloaded my problems or, or what I was feeling at the time, the better I felt, you know, when, when again, I go back to the rugby that if you break your arm, you know, you might have an operation and you, you'll put a cast on it and, you know, there's a, there's a time frame of six to eight weeks and you'll be back playing again. You cut your eyebrow and you have some stitches, you know, the doctor stitches you and heals you up. But if you hurt your brain and you hurt your feelings, there was never really any prescription of, right, this is what you need to do. And I think through, through my own journey so far, the best prescription anyone can write is to offload your problems chat to a friend, chat to, you know, there, there are, you know, societies out there with, with Mind and um, Salvation Army and there are all these different peoples out there that are wanting to help but the biggest thing that I realised, only I could ever ask for help. No one could ever throw their help on me and once I started to ask for help, um, I got better and, and now I still go through different phases. Um, 
when the weather changes, you know, when something's not gone your way, especially now when I'm, I'm doing acting, is that I'll have gone for an audition and I won't have got it. And I'd be like, oh no. And, and you know, you kind of introvert into yourself and you go, hold on a minute. I can see and identify the signs where this is going to get worse. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to speak to people around me, speak to fellow rugby players, fellow actors, because the one thing that I have learned throughout any walk of life is that we look at the similarities in people and not the differences. So, and the biggest similarity that we've all got is we're all human beings. And I think once we identify with the human element of, we all go through same problems. Yeah, it might be yours is on a different day, yours on a different year, but as long as we can relate to each other and offer each other help, then I think we're doing a good job. I'm Rob Parker. Let's talk about it.